As followers of Christ, we want to use this communion time to examine ourselves and to remember what we were rescued from and to remember what we have in Christ. To help us remember this morning, we are going to be in John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. If you do not have a Bible, please raise your hand. There are men that are going to come down the aisles and present you one. If you do not own a Bible, you may take, the, take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. Please pray with me. Father, we are nothing without the love of Christ. All that we have and all that we are is because of your kindness to us. We are so grateful to be able to understand the price that was paid by Christ to save us from ourselves and to know of his willingness to go to the cross on our behalf. Thank you, in Jesus' name, amen. So let's read together John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. Therefore, many other signs Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. These two verses close out chapter 20 of, close out John in chapter 20, and contain the purpose statements of why John wrote this gospel. John has two, pur two purposes for writing this book. First is to lay out the evidence that would lead you to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And his second is that by believing in Jesus, that Jesus is the Christ, you may have life in his name. The book of John lays out the evidence which is centered on the person and the work of Christ. So as you look back at verses 30 and 31, you see the words signs, believe, and life, which are used throughout the gospel to support the theme of salvation in Jesus Christ. John is using the word signs in these two passages to refer to miracles that Jesus performed during his ministries here on earth. These signs or miracles are evidence that John has written that we may believe that Jesus is the Christ. There are nearly 40 separate miracles recorded in the four Gospels. But this is by no means the total of all the miracles performed by Jesus. John chapter 21 verse 25 says this, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. What an amazing statement that the world couldn't contain all the books that if the miracles performed by Jesus were written down. The word signs is used in these two passages to simply define the purpose of the miracles performed by Jesus. So what is the purpose of a sign? A sign is used to point to something. So when you are at a sign or at a miracle in the book of John, you are to understand that Jesus is directing you to look at him and who he is. Look back at verse 31, which says, These signs which have been written by John in this gospel have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. As stated before, the book of John uses the signs and miracles performed by Jesus to provide evidence that he is who he says he is, the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God, and that belief in him will result in eternal life. 
This is why the book of John is an excellent place to begin reading God's word. Many years ago, we gave my dad recordings of the whole book of John, and my mom told us that he listened to them not once, but twice. We have hope <clears throat> that God used those recordings to bring him to repentance and faith because many of us saw the fruit of the Spirit manifested in his life. He asked for forgiveness. When confronted with sin, his voice was soft and not gruff. His words were kind rather than harsh. And for the first time, he told each of his children that he loved us. Everyone around him noticed that he was a changed man. So what do we mean by Jesus is the Christ? And why is this so important? Christ in the Greek means anointed one or chosen one. And these two descriptions in Hebrew are used to describe Messiah. John puts forth the evidence in this gospel that Jesus is God's anointed one. The Messiah. He is God's son. God's word refers to people who are anointed as those who are set apart for a specific spiritual duty. These people are representatives of God. They have a rep responsibility to God to act in his place. These individuals were anointed by oil, which was to symbolize that they were set apart for a sacred responsibility. There were three people in God's kingdom that were uh, the anointed ones. Kings, priests, and prophets chosen by God, set apart for distinctive responsibilities. They were God's choice to speak for him, and they were empowered to serve him and give divine authority, and were given divine authority to represent him. These were the anointed ones of the Old Testament, and they were given spe special duties. The kings were to rule, the priests were intercessors and mediators, the prophets were to preach and proclaim truth. The New Testament informs us that Jesus is the anointed one. He is the Christ, the Messiah, and all the functions that I just described Rulers, intercessors, mediators, and teachers find their fulfillment in him. 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. And looking back at our passage in verse 31, But these have been written so that you may believe that Christ is, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So this is a bottom line. As sinful men, we need a king. We need a priest. We need a prophet. Because of our sin, we were separated from God. We were blind to spiritual things and to the bondage of our sin. So man needs a king to reign over all of creation on earth and in heaven to subdue every enemy of his soul. And man needs a prophet to reveal God. When man fell in Genesis 3, he lost the righteousness and the holiness with which he was created that enabled him to have a relationship with God. Man needs a priest to reconcile him to God and a priest who can provide a sacrifice that satisfies God. Jesus fulfills our every need. God, in his wondrous and amazing grace, gives us exactly what we need in Jesus Christ, a king, a priest, and a prophet. There were many anointed ones in the Old Testament. These were chosen, given divine authority, given the power of the Holy Spirit, but none could be the true saving 
mediator. None are called Savior. None are called Redeemer. None are called Lord until Jesus came. And when he was born, he was identified <clears throat> as the Messiah, the Christ. <clears throat> He's identified as the Son of God, Emmanuel, God with us. He is our King. He is our Savior. His name is Jesus. And he came to save his people from their sins. He was chosen by God and says of himself that he was sent by God. So if you're here today and have not come to faith in Christ Jesus, if you're not convinced that you need a Savior, I want to remind you that Jesus as your heavenly mediator, that without him, you will face judgment as an unredeemed sinner. So don't wait for another moment. God commands you. Today is the day of salvation. And you don't know if you've got another day coming tomorrow. Don't risk your eternity. Hebrews 9.27 is clear. It is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. So please, remember that the book of John holds all the evidence you need to be convinced that every man, woman, and child needs Jesus as their mediator because you do not have what it takes to stand in the presence of a holy God without one. Please consider talking with the person who brought you or one of the elders before you leave today about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. However, if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior, please allow the elements to pass you by. This time of communion is for those who have a relationship with Jesus. Believers, please use this time to examine yourselves, meditating on your relationship with Christ, seeking his forgiveness for any unconfessed sins. Please join in recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah and that he is all that we need. Men, please come and serve us.